sadly no brush on its own will transform your watercolour paintings. Practice will. And I want to share a couple of really simple exercises which will help you master one of the most versatile brush strokes which will have a huge impact on your work. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I share a tip or trick that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's a wonderful brush stroke. I hate to break it to you, but there is no such thing as a magic brush. When you're doing a demonstration, people very often say, oh, what brush are you using? And it's not the brush that makes the painting, it's how you use it. So I want to show you a few exercises for really making beautiful marks with your brush. But what are you going to look for in a brush? And there's obviously size, something like that's about a size six, right up to a big fat one like that, which is a size 30. What you're usually looking for in a round brush is, say this is a size 16, you're looking for something that comes to a really nice point. And if you ever want to test your brush, just put it in the water, tap it on the side, and it should naturally come to a nice point. You shouldn't have to tweak it like I'm doing at the moment. You're also looking for something that releases the fluid in a nice controlled way because you don't want to load this with paint and then get a big splodge because it all falls off at once. And the other thing you might be looking for is the spring of the brush. Now if I bend that it pretty much pops back so that's quite springy. Whereas if we look at say one of these Chinese brushes Again, it comes to a pretty good point, but there's not much spring at it. If I push it over, not much spring, it stays there. It isn't right or wrong, it's what you want to do and how you're using the brush. And actually, this Chinese brush is quite delightful. It sheds a few hairs, I must say. Look, one's just come off there. But it only cost a couple of pounds. And for that price, do you know what? It's really not bad. <laughs> So let's look at how we're going to use them. I'll leave that Chinese brush, that big brush, and let's leave that one there because it's got a beautiful point. So in any brush, you've got the point and the belly, and the belly holds a lot of that fluid, but the point is where you can make a very fine mark. So you can use the different parts of the brush and hold it in different ways to activate those parts. So let's load it with paint just by putting it in and you know it's loaded if it's not dripping off. If I gave that a gentle tap now, a drop would come off and that means it's fully loaded. So I've just got a piece of watercolour paper here and I'm holding the brush very vertically to see how fine a mark I can get from that big fat brush and let's go the other way. It's really worth noting that your mark on the whole tends to go thick to thin and you see this mark here is thinner at the top than the bottom and that's just natural but if you were doing branches of a tree or grass the direction you do your stroke is important but if I drag the brush down the page like that you can see what a broad stroke I get so that's using the belly. I wonder if we put those together what we get well of course I know which is if we go from the tip push down and lift up sorry I just touch that up do another one tip push down lift up we get a leaf shape let's go back the other way tip push down come up a leaf shape, tip, pull down, come up. And this is the brush stroke that I want you to practice because it is so versatile and so useful. Let's do a, a whole line of those. Tip, push down, come up, push down, come up, push down, come up, push down, come up. So try and I'll just tidy up that end. Try and do a whole line of those shapes, a nice little string of pearls. Let's use a smaller one and see the same. So again this has got a good spring on it, it really boings back. And do slightly finer lines because it's a smaller brush. I'm just overlapping those. I can do 
not as broad a line if I pull it down because say it isn't as big and let's do a whole line so point down up point down up down up down up and we get those little strings and let's go back the other way point down up down up down up down up do practice both directions A small brush let's practice some leaves there we go so I'm pulling it there and then let's practice the other way and I'm pushing it away from me as well and you might find one of those a little bit more comfortable. I've got some very nice tips on those, so I might notice that it seems easier to get a nice end point, except I, then I didn't, and use that in my painting. Let's have a go with that cheap Chinese brush that I, I said about. So I'm loading it with colour. I'm being careful because I've found that it does release the colour very quickly. I'm seeing what that point is like, holding it very vertically. Then let's go the other way, so we get nice lines. Then if I pull it down the page, yep, that good broad stroke, not quite as broad as that because of course it's a smaller brush, but still quite a decent size. And then let's try the point down up, point down up, point. Now, because it's not quite as springy, maybe I'm not going to get quite as nice points, I wonder. So let's try some individual leaves and see whether that's true. Point down up, point down up, and the other way, point down up. It's not bad. I was worried because it's not as springy that it may splay out and not give me such nice shapes. We combine some of those marks in a painting and let's use this cheap brush. If we're doing some foliage, we could start with a stem. Then we could do some leaves coming off it. And I could do those in different directions. Maybe I want a stem off and then a leaf. That's quite nice. And that's another reason, because you're doing to the left and the right, of being able to do them in both directions. Let me show you a different leaf while that's just drying. But maybe we need bigger ones. And we might do a curve like that, a bit more of a curve. And then the other side to make a bigger leaf. And I've deliberately left the white in the middle to give a bit of a vein you notice that you tend to deposit the paint where you lift the brush off the paper. So another reason to be able to do them in both directions is that maybe you could start there and pick up that paint and come down. So to be able to go forwards and backwards is a really good skill. And in two strokes, we've got a lovely big leaf in one stroke we've got a simple one. Let's come back to this. We'll use that mid green. This is still wet, so we're going to get some merging, but maybe that will be rather nice. And I'm going to layer some different color leaves on top, joining up to this branch. Some of them maybe need to have a little stem and some of them not and point down and we've suddenly got a rather pretty branch starting to develop. Let's grab a different colour. This is cobalt green which is a really nice colour that I never use. If the point goes of course while it's wet you can always go back and just sort it out. Just put a few here and then we're really starting to get lovely patterns and you can see if you're into very simple florals, very stylized, 
loose florals this could be the perfect brush stroke for you because here we're doing leaves but of course we can use it for petals and anything else we want just add a couple of really dark ones here just put a bit of dark on that stem sort that out and we've got this lovely multi-layered but very simple branch but all those colors just working together beautifully and where it merges then we get that lovely watercolor soft wet into wet and where it just overlaps we can see the different colors behind so this has all been leaf shaped but let's grab a bit of color and just think well if we were doing petals on a flower we might not want them so pointy at the end so you can sort of put your brush down and rather than getting a point you apply the pressure early and it only comes to a point in the middle so you, you might use that to make your petals and then look if I just drop something dark in the middle isn't that gorgeous why don't we put those beautiful marks into action and I thought a wreath a watercolor wreath would be really pretty to practice all those different sized leaves and maybe a few flowers and I've got um, this is cardi paper and it's handmade and it's 320 grams which is just over 140 pounds Once you've got the hang of this simple brush stroke, you can combine it in different colours and sizes to make amazing botanicals and beautiful florals. If you want to see the full tutorial, just check on my channel and you can see it in full time.